Welcome to This Week in Our Collective Heads. You have joined us for Backlog and Chill. This is the show where Patrick and I, one of us, has not seen a movie that the other one thinks they should have. This week, we did Eraserhead and The Shiny, two related movies, two different videos. This time, we are talking about The Shiny. So, Patrick, how many times have you seen The Shiny? Okay, um, I can't count. Maybe I, I understand, but I was hoping you would like scratch it into the wall somewhere. Oh, um, I'd probably say at least twenty times. It's like it's not on Star yes. Wars levels or anything. I mean, I will right. I will say I've pr I've seen The Shining more than I've seen like the original Texas Chainsaw. Um, okay. More than I've seen Psycho. Probably not as much as I've seen Night of the Living Dead. Okay. So this this was the first time that I had seen it, and I was I was thoroughly impressed. Um, the the filmmaking um, was really stellar, and and I, I enjoyed the way that it was shot, the way that they used um, practical effects. And this was a movie very much for me, at least. It was very much like The Exorcist in that I had already seen a lot of the the classic scenes, like the the I mean gonna go ahead and throw spoilers in there because everybody except for me i think has seen the this. movies uh, the movie's over 40 years old now i'll double check that but like if you haven't <laughs> seen the shining by now i think everyone knows at least the general premise and we'll spoil some we'll talk about some spoilers and some um theories as well along the way but okay. yeah but yeah i i i was really impressed with how well it held up um because a lot of times um if you if you have something that is that is clearly set in a certain time, like you know the hairstyles will be different, the cars will be different, the clothing, all those kind of things, those are to be expected. But um, special effects done in certain ways can also date the film, and I felt that um, Kubrick did a fantastic job at having everything. Although the the scenery was dated. Um, the actual effects were not. Yeah, I, I, would, I thought that they held up agree. amazing. I'd agree. I, I think the scening, the scenery is a little dated. The clothing is dated. This is it was yeah. 1980, so you're just coming out of the 70s, but you have that awkward, that awkward period before before 80s and punk and, and all that, and, and the hairstyles uh, definitely for um, for both uh, both. Uh, both Jack and Danny are very dated, but then again, kids' hairstyles, they get shaggy anyway. So yeah. um, speaking of Danny, that kid was amazing. Like um, there's, there's a lot of movies where, where they have kid actors and, um, and they're acceptable. They're, they're useful as, as props or, you know, for, for a part of the story. But I felt that um, a lot of weight was actually on Danny's performance. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember the actor's name, but the the kid who played Danny, his performance was really impressive. No, I, I would I'd completely agree. Uh, Alex in the comments is asking what Kubrick film hasn't held up, and I agree. And I will tell you, I'll tell you a very brief story in that case. We were in the theater, uh, uh, watching some uh, some trailers. Some the crowd was being a little more talkative than I would like. I'll be honest, I don't like people even talking during my trailers, um, but someone behind us uh who was she's probably in her mid to late 30s um after seeing the trailer to 2001 said did they do a new one and her bro her younger brother had to exclaim to her no that was the trait that's the trailer that's 2001 it was the reissue reprint so they just cleaned it up and yeah. it was so good and the effects looked so good that she was convinced oh this is a new movie coming out like they thought like oh yeah. it's a remake that's how good kubrick movies are that movie you that movie's not dated this one's dated only because of the uh the um, style in my opinion it is slower but i think that works for this movie it needed to be slow and and drawn out to build that tension because i would consider this movie i don't really consider it as much horror, I know it is technically in the genre. I think it's more of a suspense thriller. I mean, I get agree. I, I get that it is technically horror, but I don't feel like horror when I watch it. I don't feel. Um, I don't. I guess. I, I guess I'm jaded. Maybe I don't feel as terrified as I am. I like. I feel suspenseful and I feel terrified for the people, but I don't. Yeah. I don't look at it and go. 
oh no, this could happen to me and I don't envision the, the, the lady in the bathtub. I don't have like horror, okay, I don't anymore have uh, nightmares about that, but I watched this movie when I was in like middle school. And yeah, that, that, that may be a bit early. So between you and I, I think we have a reasonable <laughs> age to watch this movie. Yeah. Um, if you, if you take yeah, the, I, if you take the difference between the ages, yes. Yeah. Um, so a lot of, a lot of what, uh, what I enjoyed, cause you were, you're talking about the, the film being slow. I was honestly surprised when it finished, um, to look back and be like, and, and realize just how long it had been because I didn't, I didn't really notice the time whenever we started. And so you know it finishes and it was like it was how long and i was i was genuinely surprised because even though it is a slow pacing it's well paced and it keeps a steady momentum um it really which does. is impressive to have that level of suspense for that long of a time and not feel uh not have it feel oppressive yeah it keeps it keeps baiting you with more and more like intrigue because yeah. cuz you you start to you there's there's multiple mysteries going on at the same time none yeah. of which are really answered but uh but the idea of is the is the hotel haunted um yeah. is this all happening in Jack's mind um does it have anything to do with the shining itself the the psychic ability cuz obviously the like Danny's tapping into aspects of the hotel and um and those those uh, you know what's that is, is communicating with him yeah O'Hall 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 yeah but i mean like i i feel like danny danny sees more than anybody else in the hotel because yes. of his shining i think but it, it's it's a question of, there's there's a lot of different things you could think about like is is it really um jack's madness and danny is just tapping into his madness um and it's chicken or the egg thing in some of the cases where he's told something and then uh, and then he sees something. There's there's some things that come happen in slightly out of order, where yeah. it could be like, is he interpreting? Is this all going on in Jack's mind, and he's interpreting it as if he's watching it? Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it was also uh, one of the things is that um, I, I really enjoyed um, O'Halloran explaining The Shining to Danny as exposition. Mm -hmm. I thought that worked really really well yes. because you as as a as a filmmaker you want to be able to set up this this uh kind of the the rules and it's it's not it's not super explicit it's just you know we can kind of see things and like there's there's a a specificity about okay you have it i have it there's some of it hanging around the hotel yeah but you you know where it's going to come from but not necessarily how it's going to manifest I would agree. one of the other things um about danny is that he would get um he would get very afraid um but he 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 was he was afraid but he wasn't i didn't feel that he was in immediate danger and so it it seems like he's seen things like this before but maybe never at this level like this intensity yeah i mean he's definitely frightened of you know the twins um and that which the the twins seem to be twins and the and the and the elevator of blood see, okay what? um they're not twins they say so in the movie they're 10 and 8 okay i've always heard them referred to as the twins and it didn't bother me until i watched the movie because like because okay, you have so twins <laughs> i do have twins and so so i'm 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 looking at it, and so I I had seen enough that I was like, okay, those aren't twins, but apparently they are on the movie. And then I watched the movie, and they say eight and ten, and I'm like, well, then why has everyone been calling them twins? I, I think I think it's the creepiness yeah, of the uh, it's the creepiness of the um, unison talking mm -hmm. and all of that that it etches into your memory, kind of like Texas Chainsaw. I think I've, I've told you about that in other movies that have mm -hmm. specific moments that people remember that weren't in the movie. Um, yeah, and and that's. Uh, the the girl with the darker hair is considerably taller than her sister, but she kind of hunches down yeah. um, to make them about the same. And so, and because the effect is much more about um, 
about seeing them close enough together. I think the only reason that I did notice it was, again, like he said, I, I have twins, and so that just yeah. kind of hurts well, my Everyone brain. refers to them as twins, so definitely when they specifically say they're not twins, which I which I was like, oh yeah, that did, they did say that. Um, Alex is saying he thinks that they're twins in the book, which he says we should probably read after, uh, after watching this. Um, okay. I think, uh, to me... It's it kind of that, that's kind of like a group mentality thing, kind of like um, the idea of uh, of the parties that happen. You mentioned something, and what you had been told about the movie uh, was slightly wrong in regards to uh, in regards to the dog, uh, which we won't go into details here. But the the man dressed up as the dog, which you thought was, or you, I guess I it was thought just, that was something entirely different. Yes, yeah, thought it was so, so, uh, either way explicit, but. I think it was done interestingly because when I watched it for the first time, I didn't quite get what was going on. I did. I mean, obviously, I was in. I mean, I was in middle school, so I understood some things. But yeah, I honestly that kind of flew over my head the first couple times that I watched it, um, because it's not explicit in, in like showing the act or anything. Um, I think the um, oh, what was the bartender's name? I forgot now. I don't know if you wrote it down. Lloyd. Lloyd. Like, I like. Which is, which is funny because the kids, the 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 character's name was Danny, and the actor's name was Danny Lloyd, and then we had Lloyd show up okay. later. And so, gotcha, yeah, yeah. We, apparently, they didn't have that many names in the seventies. No, I, yeah, I don't think they did. Um, I th I did like I liked him. I liked their interaction, and I think this this is where, you know, there's all kinds of interpretations, and I think Kubrick, uh, along with uh, the David Lynch movie, we're going to discuss later. A lot of what he did in this movie, what he put in this movie, was not supposed to be taken literally, or it was purposely meant to be open to interpretation. Because this is this is a, a bartender who he may or may not have known. I mean, it seems yeah. like he knew it, knew him, but um, this is something that, uh, again, David Lynch does a lot in, in other movies. It's almost the dream state where you're watching something or you're in this case not watching it but but living something and as if you're in a dream things just they're out of the they're really out of the ordinary but in a dream state you're just like oh yeah it's lloyd no big yeah. deal he's just hanging out um i i also it, frequently uh older movies tend to tend to get um the 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 way that um mental illness operates on someone and and some of the some of the things either they'll be excessively overt about it and it's like this is the reason he's messed up yep. um but one of the things that that i was really interested in um as it pertains to to jack's alcoholism um as well as his uh his resentment of of his family keeping him from writing um i thought that that was that that was really well played because it was it was just kind of low-key throughout and then he you know when he's talking with Lloyd, he says, "I know." And so I, I mean, I grabbed him by the arm, and I mean everybody does that. I just, I just grabbed him a little bit too hard, and it's something where, where it was a resentment that he'd held on to, and he, he just allowed all of this mm -hmm. to just build and build and build and build and build, and then uh, when it, when it finally manifests itself, yeah. it's. It's, you know, he starts at 11. Um, Nat in the chat says that she thought the entire movie was just eerily calm and says that that adds to the horror aspect. Oh, her. yeah, I'd agree. I mean, the the, the fact that you have, and I, I, you've probably seen Ready Player One as well at this point, when you have, there's references in, in that, of course, to The Shining. But the idea of, and, and Danny's obviously freaking out when he just turns the corner and boom, they're the girls, right? But, yeah. but you know walking into the the bar uh, or i guess it was the uh, ballroom and walking up to the bar and just ordering a drink and just being happy to see lloyd there it was just it was so normal and yeah. and if as you're watching it thinking of the narrative it's just, you you're starting to think you know is wait someone else here who is lloyd like it doesn't like they fill you in a little bit but it's like but why is he here but he's not and i i think that adds a lot to the movie um the the calmness does add a lot because the most intense moments are well most intense moments are with danny in the in the beginning uh and then 
uh, you have as Jack is cracking uh, when he first goes to when Danny goes to the room and you don't see like what he saw, but when you, when right. Jack, when Jack goes there, um, that's where you have okay he's experienced something that he can't he can't voice without sounding like he's crazy and yeah obviously alcoholism and everything else is is um, is part of that but. He's com he's completely cracked after that, and yeah. um, the ending is different in the movie versus versus the book. We'll talk. You know, we can talk about the um, uh, the ending of the movie and okay. I guess um, the lead up. But, mm -hmm. Well, let's let's go ahead and talk about that, and then after that, I want to talk about um, the the I want to focus in and before we finish this discussion, talk about specifically the symbolism of of the the characters representing different things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and talk about the ending. Yes, because yeah, go ahead. Um, because it was, it was kind of a, it was a culmination of a lot of things that had been built up. Like, um, you know, uh, there was the hedge maze and he had seen them in the hedge maze. Yeah. Uh, and that was, I think that was the first, uh, I think that was the first illusion that we saw something in. And it was kind of a way, um, that's not, clearly this is not happening. Yeah. This is just happening in his mind. But, um. So to, to have that come back, to have oh, how, who I really felt bad for. Like, I really he, did. You, he, <sighs> you're like, oh, he's going to save the day. He's coming in there. It's going to be, oh, no. <laughs> and he did. I mean, he, he did save the day because if, if they don't have this, what was it, snowcat? Yeah, yeah. If they, if they don't have the snowcat, they don't get away. But he didn't get to see it through, yeah. which, which was a bummer. Yeah, I thought um, the idea of them being uh, locked in there, and I guess before we talk about the ending, I have to talk about the best scene, well, best scenes in the entire movie of, um, I always forget uh, forget um, his wife's name. Like, I watched the movie and I forgot her name already. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Wendy. <laughs> Every single, I have to like replay the lines in my brain. Give me the bat, Wendy. Nice. Give me the bat. I'm not going to hurt you. Like that scene and going through the um which again you have that scene where she's swinging a bat at him hits him on the head drags him and locks him into a into the freezer yeah and he gets out from lloyd's help yeah there's so yeah there's a lot going there's a lot on going there. on there but in the end she very skillfully leads him into the maze and loses him in the maze, which I think that was all she really wanted. She just needed to delay him, uh, which I thought. Hmm? I thought he chased Danny into the maze. Did he chase? Oh yeah, he did chase Danny in the maze. Sorry, uh, that's okay. right. He chased Danny in the maze. Sorry. Um, I think the uh, him being frozen in uh, in the maze works really well from a visual standpoint, and seeing him frozen mm -hmm. there um, in the book. Uh, and Alex is going to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he's yeah. I'm sorry, he's still watching. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the book, uh, not just, or should I spoil the book? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and spoil the book the, because I mean the um, the boiler because he that's one of the main reasons why he's a caretaker there. The boiler explodes yeah. and ki oh. and kills him. And if I'm not mistaken, like he delays uh, and allows Wendy and uh, and Danny to leave uh, with enough time. I can't remember. I don't know the, all the details, but I do know that um, it's like almost the self-sacrifice moment uh, in the book. So it's almost like a redemption thing. So it's definitely not what Kubrick was going for. Um, uh, yeah, Alex, they go ahead and spoil too late. I already did. Um, he asked, uh, where do you stand on Stephen King? Says it's ghost. Kubrick says it doesn't. Um, I think that it is, it is ghosts in the original and Kubrick was trying to leave it up to interpretation. I think that's that's my my view on of what it was, um, but her freezing him in the in the maze I thought was great visually, but that last moment uh, is where again this is Kubrick just wanting to mess with us. The last moment, which I to I, I told you what uh, that you'd would make you go what the hell, uh, seeing his picture as the caretaker, and yeah, it, yeah years and years decades prior. Which couldn't have happened, but yep, but somehow it did. Um, but Lloyd yeah. tells him, "You've always been here." So yeah, and so um, 
So yeah, o overall the the characters were magnificent. Um, I did think one of the one of my few critiques of the film, um, and I think that a lot of this is just simply being of, of that particular era in filmmaking. But I thought that the that the discordant music was um, a bit overused because um, it you know it 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 created tension. But I think that it's sometimes scarier to actually see something develop for yourself rather than to be told, hey, notice this. I, I think it is. I think that that is something that music has, music always kind of amplifies uh, the, the feel. I think that's what it should be doing. It shouldn't tell you how to feel, but it should kind of solidify what you're watching because sound is... Um, Scientifically speaking, sound is 60% when you're watching a movie or, or, or a TV show. Sound is 60% of the experience because we think of it as visual experience, but yeah. our brains operate in regards to the audio. Our brains pick up on so many cues without us noticing them. Uh, the feel, uh, perf and I keep throwing out examples, but we've been watching rewatching Dexter, and Dexter has some of the best music of any TV show. Absolutely. And it's barely there most of the time, and that's. But at the same time, it makes it really makes you feel certain things. So I would agree it was a little spot on when it comes to the music, a little little too um, on the nose. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I don't know if that was part of the the time because now I think like they do more jump scares than ever. Um, yeah. And or now we're getting a little bit away from it, but for a while it was just jump scares. Like you'd have to have a really loud crescendo of music while yeah. like a cat jumps out and it was just stupid so um so so yeah and then and then when it came to the the cinematography and the way that the way that the shots were composed were incredible um i think i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that um that if you're if if you have a giant set like they did for the for the full hotel so many follow shots with danny where where he would be riding his trike or he'd be running from from dad or like just all these different things that are seen from his perspective and the only other character that we chase is actually uh jack at the very end mm -hmm. and so that shift when we're chasing after danny yep. was was a really really impactful choice um but just just the way that everything is set up and the 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 vastness of the space and and feeling the emptiness of it yeah yeah was, was something that that i thought was very well done no i I'd agree uh, owen did correct me and i want to correct this for the show because he did thankfully correct me live uh, he said danny pull uh pulls the uh the normal jack uh, out i guess it's jack for the um uh for the uh boiler uh uh using the shining uh and the house the the power of the house tells Jack to run and fix the boiler, and they as they leave. Uh, so yeah, so it is it is used. Uh, he doesn't make it out in time for stopping it from from boiling. Yeah, so uh, that does um, that does that changes it. I thought guess because it was told to me by someone you know this game of telephone. So I thought it was like a sacrifice thing. So it's not. Um, Owen also commented saying he started playing a game with himself uh, for the show. And it's, has Owen ever seen this movie? So far, the answer has been no. Nice. <laughs> Owen has never seen The Shining, so uh, there you go. Um, overall, you talk about the, the, the symbolism. I think there's a lot in the movie that, again, most people don't pick up on. Um, did you, or well, I guess you didn't pick up on it because you've only seen it once. The very beginning of, uh, of the movie when the... Um, when uh what's his name o'brady whatever's like showing him around the hotel um mm -hmm. jack starts limping like and it's it's this weird moment where you think he's like maybe making fun of some the one of the other people uh in the shot it's they're doing a tracking shot along um as they're walking through the hotel and jack starts limping it's like that's kind of weird but it again shows this kind of view of like is it an echo of what's going to happen yeah. has it always happened um but there's a lot of that weird is, little moments that like very that. interesting yeah, yeah. Yeah. What else? Um, what, what did you pick on sim symbolism well, wise? A lot of the other, a lot of the other symbols were um, when it came to um, he. Jack wanted everything to be someone else's fault. Um, his his desire to to reject responsibility 
for for uh, his his actions in not um, not being the best dad to his kid, hurting his kid, uh, when it came to not wanting to take responsibility for, well, I haven't written, you know, there's there's a lot of things like that. And so the, the way that the house um, pushes him into these situations where where he has to he has to use the hallucinations mm-hmm. to make things not his fault anymore yeah um, and then the the different ways that the three characters cope because um he he deals with it by uh rationalizing and lashing out um danny deals with it uh by uh what was what was the finger guy's name or the 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 boy who lives in his mouth's name oh um no oh, what's wrong with me uh it's not, okay. it's not Jack. Well, think uh, about it. But yeah, that that was something that, that I had never heard referenced, but uh, I found it really, really effective. Uh, Tony. Tony, was yeah. The, was the, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so seeing the way that all of them tried to distance themselves by a layer or two from anything that was happening um, and, and how well that worked for each of them, because um, Wendy wanted to, Wendy wanted to, to, put everything in the past and this has already happened but it's fine now he hasn't touched a drink in five months and he's such a better dad Mm -hmm. and like everything needs to be fixed now yeah and and so she she needs to push everything into the past um jack tries to distance himself from it and then danny says well it doesn't matter what happens because tony's gonna get me through this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and i'm I, I, I really enjoyed watching the way that that played out for each of them because it was a lot of the the times of conflict were when those coping mechanisms clash yeah yeah I, I would agree I would agree I think that that's an interesting perspective from it that I didn't that I hadn't I didn't think about until like much you know I was much older in in watching the movie and and realizing definitely uh jack's coping mechanisms but and uh and danny's but i didn't think about wendy's because wendy is trying to you know tell herself no he's mm-hmm. different he's better um like he's fixed he's 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 100 percent. it's like that's not how quite how these things work but but that's how it works to her and that's yeah. how i think a lot of people viewed addiction that's how a lot of people viewed things like that where it's like oh well he doesn't do it anymore so he's okay well, okay. Well, yeah. that doesn't mean that he won't start. So, which right. obviously and it, and it, he's given the choice that he and, he and he he makes the conscious decision, be it whether or not it was a it was a ghost or in his mind or whatever. He his he makes the decision to oh I guess I'll have a drink. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but so, yeah. yeah. Over overall, absolutely phenomenal experience. Yeah, I think it, I think that this is this is one of the movies that I think that. I wouldn't say everyone should watch, but I think that it's definitely an amazing movie when it comes to uh, to cinema, when it comes to pacing, acting. Everything is really well done in this movie. Uh, so I would highly recommend this movie to most people. We'll give it that rating. Why not? Yeah. And and same. Having having watched this, um, like I said, I'd seen a lot of... I had, I knew a lot of stuff going in, but the, the way that it was all put together and the, the skill with which the individual elements were managed was something that is absolutely worth seeing even if you know the ending even if you know most of the story beats um the way that it's composed uh the acting the music everything comes together masterfully uh by kubrick and the and the actors and in, in, yeah. yep i'd agree so go check it out if you haven't already um or uh, expose someone else to this wonderful movie uh, who hasn't seen it pass along that backlog or fix someone else's backlog whatever that tagline should be and let, let us know in the comments what our tagline should be for the show because that'd be cool to say at the end right yeah and then uh next week we're gonna do uh rock of ages which neither of us has seen and uh it's a, it's a lot more modern than any of the other ones that we've watched so far and uh so yeah watch that and we'll catch you in next week for that Bye. Thanks for watching This Week in Our Collective Heads. Uh, Subscribe over here and click the bell. That way you'll know about any new videos that we put up because we put up a lot of uh, gameplay, a lot of stories from games and stuff like that. And gameplay is down here. Yeah, and you got more editorials and new stuff down here. Check it out.